Hey everyone, in today's video, we are talking all about computation. So those beginning addition and subtraction facts and how students are able to solve them quickly. This is actually video number four in a math series that I'm doing this summer, where in each video I am taking one skill and I'm teaching some conceptual ideas, as well as some concrete activities that you can take and use with your students right away. The first video I did was about comparing numbers. It looks like this. The second was identifying patterns on a one 100 or 120 chart. And last week, my video was all about that beginning place value, those tens and ones. So today I wanted to talk about, again, that beginning computation. I have some number talk ideas and strategies for you to use with your students. And then I have a bunch of different hands-on uh, and print and play activities that you can do with your kids to help them practice computing both addition and subtraction problems. So if you are ready, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's just dive in. When we're talking about computation in grades K through two, we're basically talking about addition and subtraction, right? Those are the types of problems that our K through two students are working on computing. And so there are some conceptual ideas that you'll want students to understand um, in terms of what addition really is. So adding is when we're joining things together. Um, in subtraction, we are separating something from one larger number. Um, there's all sorts of conceptual ideas to go along with both addition and subtraction. But in this video, I wanna focus specifically on computation. So actually solving that problem quickly. If you do wanna see other videos like this on addition and subtraction, just let me know down in the comments and I can make them in a very similar way like conceptual ideas students will need to know with some activities um, for both addition and subtraction. But when it comes to computation itself, one of the biggest ideas we really want our students to understand is that any number can be made up of smaller numbers. So decomposition essentially, right? We want students to be able to reason flexibly with numbers and understand that, you know, a seven can be made as a five and a two. It can be made as a six and a one. Being able to decompose these numbers is going to help students compute both addition and subtraction problems way faster. And using number talks are a great way to explicitly teach this to students and have them reason with numbers. So what might this look like? A simple idea would be to pass out three different number cards to each pair of students and have them figure out the sum. So for example, you could pass out the number cards four, five, and two. And of course, this can be differentiated for kindergarten as well as second grade. This would be a easy first grade example that I would give you, four, five, and two. So a pair of students would have these cards, right? These three that have a four, a five, and a two, and their job is to figure out the sum. Now, before you send them off, you would tell them that each student needs to be able to explain how they got their sum. What did they do to add these three numbers together? So as you send them off with their cards, that's their goal. They're going to figure out how to solve that problem, how to compute that equation. At the same time, other pairs around the class will have a different set of three cards, which again, you can also differentiate based on the pairings of students. So as students are completing this activity, you're going to want to circulate and listen into their strategies. Ask the pairs, how did you solve this? How, what did you end up doing? Some will tell you, oh, I added the four and the two together first to make six, and then I added the five more to get 11. Or maybe they added the five and the two together first and got seven, and then added the four and got 11. And what students aren't naming yet, but what they're doing is they're getting that idea of the commutative property way before we even introduce it. But in first grade, they're understanding, wait a second, I can add these numbers together in any order. I can simply move the cards around. I can add them any way. You may have a student who uses a friendly number to go ahead and solve. In this problem here where we have four, five, and two, a student might say, well, I know that five plus five equals 10. So five plus four must equal nine. And then plus two more is 11. So here the student would have realized that five plus five equals 10, but because that one's not a complete five, it's four, we need to take one away. Students might also do the same thing with doubles plus one facts if you've introduced that strategy, and they might say, I know four plus four is eight, and here four plus five, one more must equal nine. If you do hear students using a strategy like that or a different type of strategy that you haven't heard of yet or most of your class isn't introduced to yet, make sure you have them present because the goal is after students solve this, you're going to wanna sit everybody back down and you're going to call on a couple pairs to go ahead and share their thinking. This is where the number talk comes in. So once everybody is back on the rug, you will call a pair to come up and you will ask one of the students, how did you solve your problem? Can you explain what you did? 
As soon as that student does that and they explain their steps, instead of saying yes, no, asking for anything, you're going to ask their partner to restate what their partner said. So the partner who didn't speak yet, you're asking them, can you tell us what Angela did? And they will have to restate how she solved the problem. Then you can ask that partner if they solved it a different way than Angela, let's say. And if not, this is when you pose it to the class. Could you have solved their problem a different way? Now the class didn't have their problem, so let's take a look. We heard how Angela and her partner did it. Now how can you solve it? What other ways can this be solved? And if a doubles fact doesn't come up here or a friendly number making that number 10 doesn't come up, this is where you can introduce it. So this is another important part. When a student is introducing that doubles fact that they see, either doubles minus one or doubles plus one, or if you're introducing it yourself, what I want you to show on the board, look at right here, is really that you're decomposing one of those numbers, right? You are decomposing that five into four and one to make that friendly number eight. You want to actually display it like this, let students see with the little carrot there that you are decomposing that five into the four and the one that you're adding the two fours together first, you have this one left over and then the two more. And you want to do this because sometimes our students are able to say, oh, I know four plus four equals eight and the one more equals nine. They know this as a doubles plus doubles fact, but they aren't necessarily recognizing that in order to do that, they're actually decomposing that number five. They're not recognizing that part and sometimes that's missed. And as students get to higher and higher numbers that they're computing, this will become more important that they know what numbers a number has been decomposed into. So that type of activity with the three add-ins and the cards, this can be done over and over so many times in your class to reinforce all different types of strategies. But decomposition is such an important one that as students go ahead and start computing these facts, I want them to start thinking of other ways they can decompose numbers. Because realistically, that problem right there, four plus five plus two, could be solved in so many different ways. Just to show one more quick example, when students are used to that doubles fact using friendly numbers, they might decompose that two into a one and one, take one of those ones over to the four to make five plus five a friendly number of 10 and then add one more. This might sound a little heady and confusing, but I promise you this is something I've done with my first grade classrooms before. And from the beginning of the year all the way to the end, if I gave a four add end addition problem right now to some of my first grade classrooms, they would be able to tell me like a gajillion different ways to solve it. They're like, oh, well you could break that number into this, 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 you can add those together, then you can add this together, so on and so forth. They become like computation all stars which again is great for that foundational knowledge before they go on and build their skills in older grades. Now I do wanna show you too that decomposition can be used with subtraction, so let me just show you a quick example there. Okay, when using decomposition to help solve subtraction problems, students are going to find this most beneficial if they are subtracting to a friendly number. So let me show you what I mean by that. Here's an example of 12 minus four. Now here what I would want students to recognize is that they could break this four down into two and two. That way we can, instead of you know counting back four spaces, students could know that, oh, 12 minus two equals 10. That's going to be a friendlier, easier number for me to subtract. And I know very quickly that 10 minus two more equals eight. So 12 minus four must equal eight. Here's another example that illustrates this, 25 minus seven. So this might seem like a more difficult problem for students to solve at first, but if they can recognize that they can decompose that seven into five and two, they can take away five from the 25 to get a friendly number of 20, and then they simply count back two to get to 18. So 25 minus seven equals 18. Now often when decomposing with subtraction, it can be a little trickier for your students. This is something you will want to introduce in first grade, um, but definitely review and really hone in on in second grade when solving like this. And something that can really help is an open number line. So if you feel like your students are not fully understanding, or maybe they're able to do that first step and they're like, okay, 25 minus five equals 20 but then what do I subtract again? If they're, if they're getting stuck there, that means they're not really understanding that you're decomposing that number. So again, a little carrot will help them when we're doing this type of number talk to actually show them, but a number line helps as well. Here's what that might look like. And here you can see I have an open number line and I have 25, and then I wrote a big hot back that says minus five to 20. So I would display this on the board looking just like this, and I would ask my students, does this look like a good start to solve this subtraction problem. 
and kind of just listen to my students answer that question. Do they think this is a good idea? Do they not think this is a good idea? Uh, let's see what they have to say. Then of course I need to say, what do I do next? I did 25 minus five, I have that friendly number of 20, but now what do I do? And by having that top jump there, it'll help students see that we already subtracted five, so we have 25 minus five, how many more do we need to subtract? We need one more little jump of two. Just like the three add and addition problems I shared earlier, this is not something you will just do during one number talk and your students will just get it. Um, some of them will, and that'll be great, but you do want to kind of use these strategies, mix in other strategies uh, over and over throughout the year. Number talk surrounding computation is something you're really going to focus on all year long. So there are two of the main number talks I would use with my students when talking about computation, for getting them to think about those conceptual ideas of decomposition when they are both adding and subtracting. Now let's dive into some concrete activities. Now I mentioned this at the beginning of the video but when you're talking about addition and subtraction, there's many more concepts besides, you know, simple computation that really go into it. So when your students are learning how to add and subtract, you really want to start with some concrete physical ideas of both joining and separating. So first I just wanted to share some of those activities. Um, first are my free build it cards. This is a freebie I've had forever. It's a bunch of cards and they just are build and add, right? Build it edition freebie. Students will go ahead and build six, for example, they will add three more, and then they need to determine the sum. And to do this, we use two different color cubes to really show the two add-ins. So again, they're used to having one start and then they're joining joining some more in, they're joining together, and how many do they have? Now I also have this for subtraction, it is called build and remove, and here students will actually do this on a 10s frame or a 20s frame, um, and they will go ahead and build a number, and then they will remove some and see what they are left with. This type of simple hands-on practice is definitely what I always start with in both kindergarten for a long time in kindergarten, and definitely for the beginning of the year in first grade. A lot of just building, adding, what's the sum, building, removing, what's the difference? Now as for practice with computation, you're going to want to give your students tons of addition and subtraction problems throughout the year for them to practice all these different strategies they're learning, right? So I love doing that through games. I love partner games where students can play together. Um, they just keep it fun and engaging so you're not just giving students a worksheet for them to go ahead and solve different strategies, but instead they're playing a game together, but they're also solving and using different strategies. Some of my favorite games are my print and play games. Here's an example from first grade. Here's just the preview. Each print and play unit comes with six different games inside. I have roll and race, spinning around, number crash, biggest wins, color them, and plus what, which is a missing add end game. Um, and basically with each game, all students need are some dice, uh, maybe some crayons, but they're very, very low prep, and they will have students just continuing adding and finding sums, and they can use all their different strategies that you're teaching during number talks, but they can practice them independently. Those print and play games were the addition version, and that was for first grade. I have them for subtraction, I actually have them for every single math skill, but in terms of computation, I also have an entire pack for subtraction as well. And I have them all for kindergarten standards too. So here's what the kindergarten addition ones look like, and this is really going to focus on addition within 10, and for fluency, I want them to be able to add within five fluently. So here they have roll, add, and color, spin, roll, solve. Here's roll to fill using like number bonds. Um, here students will go ahead, roll, move, and solve. They have addition races and roll, move, and color. So again, very low prep. They're focused on kindergarten standards instead of more higher first grade standards, so the numbers will be a little bit lower, but they can practice those computation skills. I have those for every kindergarten math skill too, so I also have them for subtraction. And also very exciting news, but I have the second grade versions coming soon. The second grade addition version is already ready. So here's an example of one of the games right here. It's called Roll, Add, and Color, and here students are moving around the board and they have to solve these double digit addition problems. Now they will be trying to solve these quickly using the computation facts and strategies that they've learned. Um, and again, it's just a fun way for them to practice with students. It's low prep and they can work with a partner. 
So really the name of the game here is that students need to work both conceptually and concretely at the same time to kind of reinforce both of those. The concrete, you know, building and removing is going to help them understand more about what addition and subtraction mean conceptually. And these number talks are going to help them when they use concrete things to actually solve. And then once we have the concrete and the conceptual, we move to fluency. And when we're talking about fluency in math, we really are trying to take away those concrete things. We're trying to have students use those strategies quickly to be able to fluently solve problems. All right, so there you have some of my favorite conceptual and concrete activities when talking about computation. All of these ideas are really going to help your students build a strong foundation in number sense and be able to think about numbers flexibly. So that way, as we're learning different skills in math, they can make connections between the skills. They can see how things relate. They can see how how addition and subtraction relate, how they can break apart numbers to help them solve multiplication problems as they move on to later grades. I really hope you not only enjoyed this video today, but I hope you enjoyed this entire series. If you want to see more skills covered, like I said, if you want me to take a deep dive into just addition, subtraction, any other skills, I can help and make a video like this one where I share conceptual like number talk ideas along with some concrete hands-on activities. Just let me know down in the comments and I'll see if I can make those videos for you. As always, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Everything I mentioned in this video will be linked down below in the description, so check it out there. Also, most of the stuff I mentioned is already included in my SJT Math Club, which is opening very soon for members next year. I am so excited. So information for that will also be linked down below. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video I put out. And right now I put out a video on Thursday and Sunday mornings. See you in the next one. Bye.